you guys. Let me tell you, Smash Ultimate is incredible. It is easily the best game in the Smash franchise. And I feel like it is only good to do it justice by doing a complete review. If I'm going to do a review of this game, it is going to be complete. I want to review every aspect of this game. Because even though it is very close to flawless, there's unfortunately a few things that keep it from being the flawless game that everyone wants it to be. So first, let's start off with... Yes, we already knew the final roster looked beautiful, but the thing is... How does playing them feel? What I found unbelievable is that every character is balanced. No one character is overpowered. Except for Simon. And with even the smallest amount of skill, you can make any character work. Except Alf. F*** you, Alf! Plus, I like all the new customizations they add to the Mii Fighters. It's always a nice touch. The characters are so fun that I'm even surprised at who my mains are. Little Mac, Incineroar, Ken, and Martha number 7. It's honestly a miracle that they made this work. Not a lot to complain about. Warning, warning, the next part of this video contains spoilers for World of Light. If you have not completely beaten World of Light yet, please click off now. You have been warned. I'm very sure that this is the thing that I, for better or for worse, have had the highest expectations for. World of Frickin' Light, the mode that is supposedly replacing Adventure Mode from Smash Bros. Brawl. But the big question is, does it hold up? Well, the answer to that is... I have no idea. This campaign was lengthy. It took me 16 hours to complete it. To get from me starting out alone with Kirby getting the Frog Spirit, all the way up until I beat Galeem and Darkon at the same time. 16 hours! As for the actual spirit battles, I'm not gonna lie, a lot of them felt repetitive. But that was only some of them, because a lot of them were really creative. Every single spirit in World of Light had its own battle handcrafted to fit its character. Some of them fit better than others. Well, it's not wrong. I think most people's favorite spirit battle is the one where you're facing a very tiny Mr. Game & Watch to represent the bug from Earthbound, which is hilarious. Can you not tell by the tone in my voice right now? And not only that, you guys, but there is 1,300 spirits. And it's absolutely incredible how obscure some of these are, but at the same time, very welcomed. Like, are you kidding me? The guy from Wii Music? I am drowning in nostalgia right now. And not only that, they have a spirit for deep breathing. They already have the Wii Fit Trainer, so it's just the act of deep breathing. Do you ever just breathe to flex on those asthma fellows? But the bosses. The bosses! Giga Bowser felt incredibly powerful. I love how Ganon had a weak spot on its tail and that's the only way that you could damage him. Rathalos was really hard. They had the return of Gallium from the Subspace Emissary, even though I can't believe he's still alive, because did he not suicide bomb Lucas and Pokemon Trainer? And this is one that insanely surprised me. Marks. This boss battle was so awesome. I don't know why I loved it so much, I just really liked how Marx was the final villain I faced before I faced Darkon. Out of all of the bosses here, this is the only one that actually surprised me when I got to it. Rathalos, Giga Bowser, Ganon, Dracula, Gallium, they were all hinted at beforehand. But, but then I saw that silhouette of Marx and I had a heart attack. Let me tell you guys, Dracula's hitbox, someone fix it, please kill me. The map, the map for World of Light is beautiful. They create a hybrid of a bunch of different universes. They put in Goron City from Zelda, they put in Pac Maze, they put in a Mario Kart course, they add Lumio City, but one map that was really beautiful, in the lower left hand corner of the Dark Dimension, when you see you go to a dimension that creates a Triforce out of an abandoned town, Ganon's castle, and then a forest. And let me tell you, that dimension took me a while. And by far, you guys, the craziest thing is the mysterious dimension where you face Marks. That map is so disorienting. It's so beautiful. There's just so much going on at the screen at once. It's crazy, which makes it very hard to go through. The final part of World of Light I want to talk about, the story. The story itself is really good. World of Light starts out with you seeing 
the cutscene that we saw at the end of the Smash Bros. Direct, but with cutscenes, so that this way we know what exactly is going on. It's talking about Galeem making a new world in his image, which ended up being a big chaotic mashup of a bunch of different worlds, while also enslaving all of the characters. But what you realize after you beat Galeem is that without Galeem being powerful, you allow for Darkon to come in, who is the creature of darkness. And it creates the theme of light versus dark and creating a good equilibrium between the two. And that's really shown at the end where you have to choose. Do I want to take the light path and kill Galeem or do I want to take the dark path and kill Darkon? But of course, I tried to fit face Galeem because I wanted to see what would happen if Darkon was the only one left. Well, it gave me a cutscene that took me right back to the menu. It's like, oh hell no, nah, dude, it's called World of Light. You see that? World of Light. We need to have light. You can't, you can't let light die. World of Light. And the only way to find the true ending is by killing both Darkon and Galeem at the same time. Light can be just as evil as darkness. And then at the end, all the spirits are free, and then they travel all the way up into the sky. But it's still a bit of a mystery, like what happened? And you guys... The most fun I've had in a while, becoming Master Hand and killing all of the darkness. You have complete control, you know his attacks. You wanna swipe the bitches? Swipe the bitches. You wanna stone the bitches? Stone the bitches. It was so greatly fun. And then after that you climb up this tower in a, in a subspace kind of way, where you have to fight all the enemies, and then you have to face a boss rush, where if you fail once you start completely over. But you actually get to use three different lives. So finally you have to face Galeem and Darkon at the same time, and then restore peace to the world. And you guys, my one complaint about this is the cutscenes. The one reason why everybody loved the subspace cutscenes was because there was character interaction. And the way that they interacted in those cutscenes felt how they would be if they were to really have their own game together. But the only time we actually got character interaction in this was in the opening cutscene, but we already knew about that. It's in the Darkon and Galeem cutscenes, one where Mario just lays on his knees, and the other one where Fox has a f***ing orgasm. And there isn't even one character in the final cuts. But I'm not mad about this, because in the end, Sakurai did mention he was expecting the games to leak, so he did not want to put extra effort into the cutscenes, knowing that they would be spoiled weeks before the game is fully released. By the way, had some guy in Mexico get the copy of the game two weeks early? This is why we need the border wall. So no, no hate on to Sakurai if you're doing that. World of Light is a hard grind. I will give it that and I enjoyed it. <laughs>
dedicated servers. But we did get this. The matchmaking system will prioritize shorter distances between players. And it doesn't do sh Every time I enter an online lobby, it is still really laggy. There was a point when I was doing a game and there was a five second pause. Not only that, but the controls themselves take a second to render, which in a game that's so fast paced to smash is going to be really detrimental to gameplay. Now don't get me wrong, it's playable. I can play it. I play with my friend online all the time. We just have to suffer through the lag. On a, if you're doing a 1v1, it's not that bad. The lag is fine, it's bearable, but the thing is, if you're doing a four-person smash, that's when it gets really bad. Also, just a small thing, again, I don't really care, but spectate betting is gone. Why? I wanted to bet my money. Sports betting is good, guys. Don't worry, it's not like the game center got removed because of that. And also, why do they have to ban taunting? I just want to enter an online lobby and be the biggest asshole you've ever seen. But apparently not. Yes, I have to make a separate section of this because I am just amazed. The soundtrack is phenomenal. They came out with all new remixes. Not only that, they added a bunch of original stuff straight from the game that wasn't remixes. For example, the Wii Shop channel music. That is absolutely great. Do you know the surge of power I get from slamming my opponent to the ground while listening to Bossa Nova? Also, the Pokemon remixes are great. They don't sound too different to the point where they're bad. They did Xenia's theme, they did the Champion's theme, they did Gladian's theme, which I am, dare I say, glad about. Not only that, they added some really obscure music, like the boss battle music from Mihopia. At long last, the years of oppression are over. Yeah, it's just a lot of insanely catchy, beautiful, and nostalgic music. What can I say? Love it. They have added a timer for how many times you've drowned with each character. My life is complete. Yeah, guys, that's basically all I wanted to cover with Smash Ultimate. Just such a phenomenal game. And I've been waiting for this for nine months. Everyone's been waiting for this for nine months. And the wait was most certainly worth it, I have to say. But not all the hype is over yet, surprisingly, because Sakurai announced there would be five DLC fighters. They already revealed the Joker from Persona 5. Just what Smash needs, another weeb character. But not only that, Reggie said that the five DLCs that'll be coming are all from franchises that haven't had a game before. Which means a couple things. Gino is out the window, and new windows are opening. Yeah, guys, thank you for sticking out till the end. I'm probably going to be taking like two years to edit this. My first upload in five months. I've been going through a lot of weird stuff lately, just been trying to figure things out, school and stuff, but I am back, and hopefully we can make 2019 a great year. So I would like to personally thank you and say... Happy New Year. Samurai Storm is out, letting Lucario out.